Welcome back to 60 Minutes. This is a musical collaboration as bizarre as it is perfect. There's Tony Bennett, the legendary 88-year-old crooner who's been singing professionally since the 1940s. And then there's Lady Gaga, the most avant-garde name in pop music today. But for all their differences, they are, strangely, kindred spirits. And after their first brief duet four years ago, they've now returned to the studio to do an entire album. Tara Brown caught up with Mr Bennett and Lady Gaga in New York City to try and make sense of it all. In olden days, a glimpse of stocking was looked down as something shocking. Now heaven knows anything goes. Good authors, too, who once knew better words, now only use for letter words writing prose. Listening to these two entertainers perform together, it's hard to believe they're from opposite ends of the showbiz spectrum. Yet, when they're singing jazz, it truly seems the most natural collaboration in the world. And though I'm not a great romancer... I really love singing these songs, really so much. They, they have such a timeless, beautiful, whimsical way of being about everyone and everything. So when you're making an album like this, does it take you to a, a quieter world, a, a softer world? You know, not for me. It takes me to a, a softer place um, with my performance, I think. Tony brings out a lot of uh, uh, subtlety in me. Not a word everyone would use about me. <laughs> <laughs> the chemistry and affection between Lady Gaga and Tony Bennett is genuine and undeniable. And that's why I, I got attracted to performing with her, because she's herself. She's not like anybody else. She's a, just by being herself, she's a tremendous star. Anything goes! Because on the surface, people might say, I'm sure they do, that you guys are the ultimate odd couple. Well, that's what makes it good. If we were the same, it would be boring. Boring is a word that would never be used to describe Gaga. Certainly outrageous and definitely provocative. It's hard to picture the elegant 88-year-old Tony Bennett approaching Gaga for the first time back in 2011. It was the first time I ever saw her perform and the reaction was so phenomenal that when I went backstage, I said to her, let's do an album together. And she said, yes, it was that quick. So we just hit it off right away. I mean, how do you say no? You can't. <laughs> you saw it as an honor immediately. Of course, it's a, it's a total privilege. And it also was exciting for me because nobody knew I'd been singing jazz since I was 13 years old. The pair went into the studio soon after, and Gaga was able to fulfill her childhood dream. She gets too hungry for dinner at eight. I'm starving. She loves the theater, but she never comes late. The Lady is a Tramp became one of the standout songs on Tony Bennett's Duets 2 album. That's why this chick is a tramp. <laughs> She doesn't like crap games with barons and earls. You know, when Tony Bennett says, Lady Gaga can really sing, does that feel good? My gosh, there's nothing better. <laughs> you work your whole life for a legend to say something like that about you. And I just want to make him proud, too. I love the free, fresh wind in my hair. You said a little while ago how wonderful it is to have are great, recognise your talents. And you had that happen to you, Tony, right back in those early days when you were discovered by Bob Hope. I mean, yeah. how important was that for you to have someone like Bob Hope and Frank Sinatra recognise your talents? Changed my life. Uh, when Bob Hope uh, discovered me, he took me on the road with me. Uh, I, I couldn't believe it. Uh, he introduced me to Bing Crosby, and then in 
Sinatra said, for my money, Tony Bennett is the best singer I ever heard. Changed my career completely. I'm stepping out with my baby. Tony Bennett has been performing his entire life. But as a true New Yorker, he was never tempted to move to Los Angeles, where many of his contemporaries, including the chairman of the board, were dominating the stage and the silver screen. Did he become a good friend to Frank Sinatra? He was, he was my best friend, and I was his best friend. Uh, we never really spent that much time together. I was, I wasn't part of the Rat Pack. Do you no, wish you were? No, not at all. <laughs> No, because I was too busy singing and painting, and uh, uh, so I, I, I stayed in New York. I asked Gregory Peck about what he thought about the Rat Pack. He said, bad casting. <laughs> <laughs> it was a golden age for performers, revered by the public and generally the press alike. Of course, there were scandals, but celebrities were never pursued by the paparazzi like they are today. Does a part of you wish you'd started your career at the same time as Tony? Yes, that's the one thing we don't have. <laughs> yes, <laughs> except I would have, you know, celebrity was a thing, especially when Tony first hit the scene. It was just so different than it is now. Right. You know, the celebrity and the singer was held to such a in a, such a beautiful way by the media, by the press, by the audience. And I think that now we, we've sort of arrived upon this modern culture of humiliation with celebrities. That is reportedly Lady Gaga inside that. Gaga knows better than anyone about the challenges of being a pop star today. My mama told me when I from the constant scrutiny to the accusation from critics that she is all spectacle and no substance. Now, do you think that, that sometimes the spectacular that is Lady Gaga masks your music, masks the quality of your voice? I mean, I suppose some people can't see through my clothes, but people like Tony can. Beast, if we want to call it that, the fame beast. Do you feel like you are controlling that or feeding it? It's funny for us because, you know, the world looks at us almost like, like characters. And famous, like, like you said, it's like a beast or a monster. But for me and Tony, we, we get to see the side of fame that the world hasn't sensationalized. We see the fans and the smiling faces. Would you like to be starting your career in this age of celebrity and social media and, and, and such personal focus? Well, I, I don't know how you could do better than be sold out all over the world. He's saying no. <laughs> Tony Bennett is a performer who has somehow managed to survive a 70-year career without significant scandal. For Bennett, his greatest joy has always been solitary pursuits. Every day, Tony walks to his art studio, directly across the road from Central Park in New York City, and indulges his passions, singing, painting, and even sculpting. You've described Lady Gaga as the Picasso of the music world. Yeah, she's phenomenal. There's no telling what concepts he'll come up with next, you know, it'll be unexpected, like Picasso. Following the critical and commercial success of their song on Duets 2, Tony Bennett and Gaga decided to record a complete album together. I can't give you anything but love, baby called Cheek to Cheek, it's a collection of tracks made up from the Great American Songbook. It's me just being myself, and I love him just the way he is, and I'm, I'm really grateful that it's mutual. Thank you. And obviously a lot of people love you just the way you are. 
because, you know, you are considered very hip and cool, isn't he? And you... He's considered a legend. <laughs> More before hip and cool. I would put legend first. <laughs> One of the real important elements of being a star is that you have to stay... You have to be yourself. And people don't realize that. You know, he's one of the, the greatest singers of all time. And I get to be his student and his friend, and I get to learn from him. And I think my favorite thing about him is as talented as he is, gosh, what a, what a man, you know, true gentleman. Well, that's all for tonight's edition of 60 Minutes. Thanks for your company. I'm Michael Usher. Have a good night. Extra Minutes. Is it true that you were at first nervous to ask Lady Gaga to sing on your Duets 2 album? Is that true? Yes. It was a concert that we did for the poor of, of New York City, the impoverished people. And every lawyer and accountant was there that night giving money, tons and tons of money, to, uh, to the poor people of, of, that uh, haven't got jobs and are desperate about making a living. It was a wonderful benefit. And I saw the reaction to, to her. That was the first time I ever saw her perform, and the reaction was so phenomenal that when I went backstage, and she was with her mother and father, and and uh, I said to her, let's do an album together. And she said, yes, is that quick? So we just hit it off right away. I mean, how do you say no? You can't. <laughs> you saw it as an honor immediately. Of course, it's a, it's a total privilege, and it also was exciting for me because nobody knew I'd been singing jazz since I was 13 years old. Mm. And I guess in a, in a weird way, now that I know Tony, it's like I've realized I've been singing it my whole life because it's part of you. And I'm just so happy to be with him and I feel so liberated and uh, he's just such a wonderful person to be around to make music with. Mm -hmm. Extra Minutes. Another issue that you're very, you feel very strongly about from what I understand is, is war, that you're very anti-war. Oh, I think we have to grow up on that one. I mean, think of the horror of wonderful human beings getting slaughtered. Uh, and Tony was in service. There's something terribly wrong with that. It's very terribly wrong. It's very ignorant. And it's very evil. And there are people that just make an awful lot of money creating war. They sell billions of dollars with selling terrible weapons. Uh, imagine if that was, if all that money was given to food, feed the world, which Abraham Lincoln and wanted education. to do. That's what Abraham Lincoln tried to do before he was assassinated, was to feed the whole world, not give them weapons. Not kill them. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Extra Minutes. Is your perspective on fame and success in any way changed? Well, you certainly learn a lot, and you uh, you go through a lot of changes, and you know your family comes together and gets stronger, and your friends you find out who your real friends are. But no, my perspective on music has not changed. My perspective on music and on what I want to say and be, I feel like that's it's like my heart beating. You know, when I sing with Tony, it's it's like breathing. It's I don't have to think think about it in that way. And I'd, I'd rather not think about it like that. You know, I'd rather just think about it in melodies and lyrics. 